Hello, this is our second part of syntax, uh, serious syntax, because we're getting into more, some more serious uh, aspects of it. Um, you remember the me want cookie and how me want cookie is actually correct syntactically, even though it's not correct grammatically. Um, okay, so a little bit of a review of what I looked at in the last episode. Um, syntactic properties, we looked at word order, that ev every language has a particular word order. Um, also, we looked at arguments versus adjuncts. Arguments are necessary. Um, they, they c there can also be complements, which are not the subject, but they're arguments nonetheless, and they're necessary. And then we looked at, um, oh, and with the complements, that would be, um, I could say, I would like to have a cookie, a chocolate-covered Oreo cookie. So I would be an argument, would like to have, would like to, would be adjuncts, have, or, yeah, have would be the verb, the necessary, complement, cookie is the other necessary complement, um, and all the rest is adjunct, okay? And then part of speech um, versus role, and that was, again, with me want cookie, me, there is actually an object, that's the part of speech that it is, however, the role is, it's in the, it, it's, um, it's actually the argument because me is who wants the cookie. So it's just that it hasn't changed to I. Um, new information for this time, syntactic constituents and syntactic categories, okay? Constituents are certain groups of expressions within a larger phrase, and these form a syntactic unit. So how do you know if it's a syntactic unit? Here we have our um, sentence. The little bear saw the fine fat trout in the brook. Okay, so I have just picked one syntactic unit in the brook. You could do this with various syntactic units. So if you think about a syntactic unit as what what is going together in the sentence, right? The little bear, you could say the bear, and then it's little, by the way, the little bear saw, what did it see? The fine fat trout, or the trout, and then the fine fat trout, and where? In the brook, yeah? So how can you tell that it's actually a unit, though, in the brook? You can answer a question, um, do clefting, or coordination. So let me review that quickly with you. Um, so if I say the little bear saw the fine fat trout in the brook, and I picked in the brook at random. Is in the brook a syntactic constituent? Well, I can ask a question. Where did the little bear see the fine fat trout? In the brook. So yes, it's a syntactic constituent. I could also say, who saw the fine fat trout in the brook? And it would, the answer would be, the little bear, yeah? So that's answering a question. Okay, the next one that you can do is clefting, which is moving part of the sentence to the beginning. Um, we have the same example, and so is in the brook 
a syntactic constituent. So we're going to cleft it. We're going to displace part of the sentence. We're going to take this part and move it over. It was in the brook that the little brown bear saw the fine fat trout, which does make sense. So that is a constituent versus it was the brook that the little bear saw the fine fat trout in. Mm. You need the in with it. Okay, so that's clefting. And then the last one is coordination, or they also call it pro form substitution because a lot of times you have a pronoun substituting. So, can you use a pronoun in place of the syntactic constituent and have it still make sense? I can say the little bear saw the fine fat trout. Instead of in the brook, I can say there. And that's how you know. I could also say he or she saw the fine fat trout in the brook. Or the little bear saw it in the brook it. Okay. So now we're going to talk about um, how do you build a sentence. This reminded me of when kids are like in first grade and they need to build a sentence. So they need to know that the subject comes first. Here you have um, a describing word adjective and then who or what which would be the subject then the action which is the verb and then you could say where or you could have something else after that so building a sentence so if we look at syntactic categories this actually is going to help us build sentences um, this table is actually found in your book and I I'm giving you the information there so Basically, you're looking at um, a word or group of words that go together. So S would be the sentence. That's the main part. Then you have NP, which is a noun phrase. You could have the noun within the noun phrase, a determiner, which is the, this, etc., um, adjective, and adverb as well, VP, verb phrase. The, the whole verb, then you could look at what kinds of verbs they are, which you don't necessarily need to know um, for this class, but it's interesting to study if you would like to do that at another time. Um, and then uh, prepositions, prepositional phrases. So let's take a look at our sentence. Okay, so here's the noun phrase. It includes the noun and an adjective, and a determiner, the little bear. All those go together to make a noun phrase. So when a child starts speaking or a second language learner starts learning how to create sentences in a language, they need to know um, that it would be the bear, the little bear, and not the bear little, right? So the order of a sentence is important, but also the syntactic categories. And the fact that this syntactic category comes first before the verb, right? The verb form in English. So this tree, as they call it, looks different in different languages, yeah? So this one is subject, verb, object, or preposition, right? Um, here we have VP, which I also mentioned. So you have V, saw, and then an NP underneath that because what did you see? Saw the fine fat trout. So you can say saw trout or saw the trout or saw the fine fat trout, right? Okay. And then another part of the VP bigger VP is a prepositional phrase which tells you where, right? In the brook. So you have the preposition and then you have a noun phrase, the brook. Okay, so if you look back at this, that's what all this means. 
We have NP, we have N. We have determiner, adjective, VP, um, adverb, preposition, and prepositional phrase. So that's what you're looking at, okay? That, that's it. That's what you need to know. You need to know that certain um, categories will go with different categories, right? Either before or after, and then you need to think about the constituents as well. So let's look a minute at syntactic changes. Um, there are a couple of examples that I wanted to share with you. The first is from Old English to Modern English. The um, our father has changed from father our or father earn, which would be a subject, I mean an object. There were two different ways to say it. We don't have that anymore, just like some languages don't have an I instead of a me for the subject of the sentence, right? For whatever um, part of speech, part of a sentence that you're referring to, okay? So our father drinks a lot of coffee is the same as we love our father today in English. But our actually changed syntax, changed placement, and the subject, if I say our father drinks, that would be the subject, was different from we love our father, the object. Something to think about. So that's um, one change that you can um, refer to. And then this phrase, believe you me, which we say a lot in the South. <laughs> if I say, um, oh, the little bear caught that big fat trout, believe you me, I'm gonna have a good dinner, right? So one thing to think about this phrase is that it's a command. Um, so you're saying basically you have, you have the subject after the verb, believe you. Now in English, we don't even have a subject. I would just say believe, right? Believe me. But believe you me um, actually has a little bit of a different um, spin on it. Anyway, there are some um, controversy about where it comes from, so it could actually come from Old English, but some researchers say that there wasn't enough um, evidence for that. Also, it could have come from Irish Gaelic, where they use the command plus you, or command plus um, subject. Um, Syntax, yeah, word order. So this is really fun to for us to end on um, ambiguities in headlines. I remember when, um, oh man, who was that? Johnny, The Tonight Show. Um, he used to do different headlines that didn't make any sense. Uh, and then it was Jay Leno. Who was it, Johnny? I want to say Johnny Cash, that's not right. So the way that these sentences are constructed syntactically affects how they're understood semantically, okay? Minors refuse to work after death. <laughs> so they refuse to work after death of whom? Who, who died? Or after they die, they're not going to work anymore? <laughs> Stolen painting found by tree. Did the tree find the painting? Or it was found by the tree, right? Next to the tree. New Jersey judge to rule on nude beach. So is the judge going to hold court on the beach? <laughs> hmm. Court tries shooting defendant. So did the court try to shoot the defendant or did it try the shooting defendant? So sometimes the article really matters. It, de it depends on what you're saying. And then this one that I found, we love hurting people. So they love 
anyone, even hurting people, people who are hurting, right? They don't love to hurt people. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to look more into that with semantics. I want to know from you, what's your favorite kind of tree? Do you like this kind of tree with the leafy green leaves, leafy leaves? <laughs> or this. Hmm. See you next time. Thanks.